year ago, I decided to explore the Gateway Experience and it has become my most popular exploration. And thank you for that. Like, it's been so nice seeing everyone engage with it and hearing about your experiences as well. The Gateway Experience is pitched as a method of inducing an out-of-body experience. And in fact, the creator of the Gateway Experience coined the term out-of-body experience. You can take a drink every time I say experience. It plays binaural beats, some narration and some other sounds that encourage you to tap into your subconscious and separate from your physical presence. I said in my last video that I was going to keep going with it so that I could test this out at a slower pace and see what happens over time. And I did keep going and I've been wanting to make this video for such a long time. And since I started doing this, I've had some experiences. Before I begin, a lot of people have been asking where I got the tapes from and you can buy them on the Monroe Institute website, but I managed to get them a little bit cheaper. I'm not saying that people should buy ripped copies of the tapes, but if you had a vision that told you that you can buy them on eBay, then you should maybe explore that vision. I tended to do one session a day not 365 days for the last year, but enough that I was developing my abilities. Also, there's not that many tapes to fill a full year, so what you have to do is go back through them again. And before long, I just kind of came to know which ones were good for me and kind of helped me get the most out of the experience, so I would just do those ones again. I learned that the best time for me to do it was before I go to bed, although it didn't really help me sleep. It actually kept me up a bit later than I would have hoped for, but that was kind of the point. I mean, I didn't want to get to the end of this and be like, so I've just had a great sleep all year and I've learned nothing. Right before bed for me is the perfect time because I'm already winding down, I haven't had caffeine in a few hours, and listening to sounds and just pondering thoughts is just, it's a good time to do that. So it pays to spend time finding the right time. When I did this before, I was definitely overthinking and I just let my conscious mind run whilst my subconscious mind would be like, okay, well, this was for me, but never mind. So once I got into the flow of doing this, I began to write down my experiences at the end of each session. Each tape starts with the same sequence, so the more you do it, the more easier it becomes to get yourself into the right frame of mind. So I appreciate if you are the type of person who finds it really easy to visualize and imagine, then this is gonna be a breeze. This is where previously I was definitely taking the imagery side of it for granted and overthinking, where I really should have seen the images as an interpretation coming to me from my subconscious. And if you're not a visual thinker, then these steps might take a lot longer to resonate with you. You put your physical energies into a box and I would put everything in there at the end of the day, everything that I was thinking about. Whether that was good or bad, I didn't want a burst of excitement to interrupt me because suddenly I remembered that I was doing something fun the next day absolutely everything from my waking life was going in that box. You then do a breathing technique to breathe in fresh new energy and out tired old energy. And honestly, this still doesn't resonate with me. It never did, but I did it every time anyway. I appreciate that for some people, this might be really, really helpful. I, I really just didn't get anything from that particular stage, but if anything, it did lead me to do some deep breathing and that's quite peaceful. Then you create an energy bubble around yourself. Mine is like a big soap bubble, but a bit less poppable. You then say an affirmation about how you are more than your physical body and you also call upon other consciousnesses to guide you. I didn't really get anything from it in the moment, but I did like the idea that there could be other people out there at the same time doing the gateway experience and all of our consciousnesses are like unplugging from the matrix at the same time. It's just kind of cool. And then you go to focus 10. Focus 10 is the place where your consciousness is separated from your physical body and you get there by counting slowly to 10. And because there's this ocean surf backing track, the old guy's voice, a humming, and my inbuilt notion to apply visuals to sounds, I involuntarily created a space where I would go to focus 10. There's a room, this is where the box is, and that's where I start. This room is almost representative of my mind. Not that it's empty, it's just, a warm, squishy place. 
and there's a doorway and through the doorway is a platform and you sort of zigzag through the platform to get to a wall and on the other side of that wall is focus 10. So I would put things in the box, do the breathing, create the energy bubble and say the affirmation inside the room. And then I would walk out to focus 10 slowly. This is quite an accurate rendering of what it looked like. I put a lot of time into this because I love you guys. So when we get to focus 10, that's where the session begins. And sometimes your mind was just allowed to wander. And honestly, this is where I got the most out of these sessions. To me, I experienced a lot of lucid dreaming where I knew that I was in my bed at home, but my mind was entertaining that I was somewhere else and I was conscious of this. I knew that I was in this place and that I had control. And honestly, Ash a year ago would have been like, this is just dreaming, that's not how it works. But what I realized was that I was repeatedly inducing lucid dreams and what I was doing was repeatedly tapping into my subconscious and exploring it. So in one of my experiences, I was in a school and the walls and the ceiling and the floor were all rotating in a circle, almost like the drum of a washing machine going around. And there was a male school teacher sitting at a desk and he was observing this and it was as if he was learning from it which is interesting because obviously school teachers are there to teach and give knowledge, but it was as if he was taking knowledge from the environment that he was in. In the midst of this kind of chaotic environment, there was a young girl who was talking to me and she was telling me what was happening. Like the walls are moving, the ceiling is becoming the floor. Now I began noticing that young girls in particular have started appearing in my dreams a lot to tell me what's going on. They always give me information. I began to wonder if this was maybe an inner child thing, although the young girls never look like me. But I always had this feeling when I was younger that I didn't understand what was going on and I was always too afraid to ask. This is a problem that I struggled with well into adulthood. I went to college and uni and just had this horrible fear of asking questions because I felt that it would either reveal that I didn't know what I was doing or it would annoy the person that I was asking. A couple of years ago when I did the wellbeing course I discovered that my signature skill is learning and I think this channel is a testament to that. I also have quite an attachment to growth and learning in adulthood and in fact I have three tattoos that are all linked to a philosophical story about finding one's whole self. So I think my subconscious is either delivering what I would have wanted as a kid, which is someone to turn unprompted and just tell me what's going on, or it's reflective of me now. Someone who likes to be really thorough when they explain things. You know, that kid could actually be me sitting here now explaining my experience to other people in the world. So other times where I would see a young girl telling me about a situation included, I was in a field and there was a house and there was a group of soldiers in like really old school blue uniforms and they were all charging towards the house. And there was this young girl and it was her home. I knew that, I knew that her mother was inside the home, even though that's not something I could see, but those were the things that I knew. And the girl said to me, this has happened before, but not like this. I also once saw a young girl in animated form. She actually looked a lot like Marceline from Adventure Time but a child, and in the background there was a castle. But yeah, a young girl talking to me comes up time and time again. Other experiences can include conversations. There was one time I was walking with an old man and we were having a conversation about trust and we got back to his house and we just sat down and I talked about how weird it is that we can trust people that we've never actually met or touched. And I think this is in direct response to the pandemic. I think this is about me knowing that I have relationships with people that are entirely digital and I trust them even though I've never met them in person. But there's also something else that I've started thinking about a lot more now that we are moving away from the restrictions of the pandemic, which is that when I laugh very heartily with someone, I tend to put my hand on their arm. 
And obviously for the last couple of years, we've not been able to do things like that because of social distancing. And I think it's come up in my mind because I'm so aware that I am making a physical connection with a person when I do that. And sometimes it startles people a little bit because yeah, we've not been able to do that. It's involuntary. It's something I do because I feel joy and I feel trust in the moment where I'm enjoying myself. And so I just instinctively reach my arm out and touch someone's arm. And it's been really interesting to just jot down all of these experiences from my visions, all the little details and pick apart what that might mean about me. Sometimes the tapes have a bit more guidance and honestly, they were not strong points for me. So for example, in the last video, when I did wave one, I talked about a tape where you had to confront your fears and, you know, I kind of messed up a little bit with the whole spiders and bravery thing. Have I just removed bravery from my subconscious? This time I understood the brief a lot more and I went into it much more open-minded and not overthinking it too much, but I still just didn't get a lot from it. In those types of tapes where it's heavily guided, I would have less visuals. And I think that's because when I would hear the voice, I would be pulled back into my consciousness and not my subconscious, if that makes sense. So similarly, there's a tape where you ask for answers to questions. So I went in open-minded and I came up with some questions that had a bit of a yes or no answer to make it a little easier, put them out into the space that I was in and was hoping for some sort of clarity. But I don't feel that I came away with any further thoughts to what I'd already had. I don't think that my subconscious was really doing the same amount of work that it was doing when I was kind of just left to ponder and think without a voice saying, okay, and now ask this and now do that. Anytime there was a task, it just really didn't have the same effect. There was an exercise in color thinking where green is calmness, red is action and ability, and purple is healing. And the idea is that you spent that time building up those skills and then in real life, if you needed to call upon those abilities, then you could think about it in colors. Again, this didn't do a lot for me. It was one of those tapes where there was a lot of instruction, but also I have synesthesia, so I already have a lot of associations with color and shape and form. So I think this would be more useful to someone who didn't do that already. So I ended up with a massive record of all these experiences and it is really good to like go through and spot patterns like young girls and there's also things that you can like really dive into and think like where does that come from what does that mean about my subconscious what does that tell me about myself but did i have any out of body experiences so back when i started this i know that i had a preconceived expectation that an out-of-body experience is you somehow lifting up out of your body and like looking down on it like ah that's my physical self this is something else but now i feel that what is described as an out-of-body experience can actually mean a lot of different things i just think that it's probably not the same for everyone i think that the visions i talked about are out-of-body experiences because my physical body is in a bed but my mind is entertaining the idea that I'm in a field watching soldiers storm a house or I'm in a school watching the walls turn. Just because I open my eyes and realize that I am still physically in my bedroom doesn't mean that wasn't an out-of-body experience. I think I've placed too much importance on having a moment within the dream where I think about my body being physically in bed and my mind being somewhere else. However, I do also have some examples that are not based on visions or dreams. The first one is very closely linked, however. I did begin to experience seeing things like visions in real life. It's hard to describe, but sometimes I would wake up in the morning and still be dreaming, even though I was awake. It wasn't scary. It was just as if my subconscious wasn't finished dreaming yet and although I had woken up I could kind of see things over the top of my environment. I've definitely had a lot more present experiences when taking part in conversations. It's where you are not thinking ahead about what to say next 
and just listening and processing what's happening in the moment right now. It's great when it happens and it's even better if the other person is experiencing it too. Because the moment you realise that you're both now present is the moment that your subconscious can take centre stage and you're not overthinking, you're just going with the flow and trying your best to interpret and discuss what is happening now. Finally, I think my wildest example of an out-of-body experience was when I saw the Aurora Borealis. It happened in November of last year and I made a video about it for the channel, so if you fancy watching that, I'll link it below. But basically, when I saw it, I had this strange reaction where I felt like I was no longer on Earth. It was as if I wasn't on the planet anymore. I completely forgot that other people existed. The moment I realised this was after about 10 or 15 minutes of staring at the sky and feeling euphoric, I walked into a photographer who was at the same spot as me trying to capture the Aurora Borealis. Well, trying to capture the Aurora Borealis. I had been so euphoric that I didn't realise how far I had moved that there were other people and things around me, that there was a person that I just like bumped into. It was such a surreal experience where my mind really took over. So when I was looking at the lights, there was also a really clear view of the galaxy in the sky. And my immediate thoughts when I saw that were that I was looking at it and it was looking back at me. And maybe doing the gateway experience is opening up my mind to have these kind of experiences. Or maybe not, who knows? This is where I am now, and I think this helps me in my quest to grow. So I thought I'd take this part of the video to respond to some of the comments in my last video, because it's honestly so cool how everyone is sharing their experiences and talking to each other and asking questions, and I wanna give that some space. So Tim Hofer asked, when you talked about falling asleep with tape two, is there a reason you went on to tape three instead of doing tape two since you weren't awake during it? Honestly, at the time, I was relying on the tape to do all of the work and I just thought that whatever happened was supposed to happen. Now, I would consider sleeping through it a waste of time and I would want to revisit the tape. It really helped finding the right time to do it and then coming to the realization that the lucid dreaming was the best way for me to tap into my subconscious and then honing in on that made me have an experience from the gateway experience that worked and, and helped. So yeah, it was honestly just a rookie error. I just thought like, oh, if you fall asleep, that must have been what was supposed to happen. Freeman said that. I suppose not everyone is susceptible to this practice, but I went in with a very heavy scepticism and this ended up being truly life-changing and life-saving. I only wish everyone was affected by it in a deep and personal way. However, I think most people just do it because they want to have an out-of-body experience, which will most certainly prevent one from reaping full benefit from the practice and will ironically prevent one from truly developing the ability because the reality is it isn't all what we assume. Absolutely. I think going in with a preconceived notion of what you're supposed to experience strips you of what you're actually experiencing. It's very similar to where I was at the start, where I just thought that the tapes were going to make one thing happen and if I wasn't in tune with that one thing, then it wasn't working for me. And it's not that at all. Actually, almost everything in life is what you interpret it to be. So if something is happening this way for you, then that's your reality. And if it's happening a different way for somebody else, that's theirs. You're going to process things differently and so you just have to find how it works for you. I listened to a podcast recently where two guys were talking about their first experiences with psychedelic drugs and they were talking about how there are studies that show that since hallucinations and psychedelics have been portrayed in media, so in the movies and certainly in animation, that has informed what people experience when they take psychedelic drugs. So if you watch a cartoon where you see like squiggly lines and warping and circles and stuff like that, then you end up experiencing that because that's your expectation of it. So everybody's gonna be influenced slightly differently when they come to something like this, but I'm really glad that you've had a positive, life-changing experience. So some people had said that they had negative experiences by listening to the tapes. 
seeing something scary or creepy or just feeling uncomfortable and it was really nice to see that other people were coming in with suggestions or kind of talking them through how to deal with that. One person in particular said that the voice was conjuring up pictures of a sad tormented older man on a wall that would move when I looked at it like a hologram, especially the eyes. And I definitely get that. The voice at first gave me Orwellian vibes. But your comment made me think about it because I definitely also see the voiceover as coming from an older 70s looking guy with white hair and a beard. And that's not necessarily scary, it was just interesting that I had given the voice a visual and so have you. The thing is, the more I did the tapes, the less I really thought about that voice. And whilst I don't personally think that the voiceover is the best in the world, I didn't find it scary enough that it would turn me away. But that's because my subconscious and my influence gave me a visual that I was comfortable with in a way. But clearly for you, that's pretty different. The other thing is that that image of a sad, tormented old man is from your subconscious. And if you can explore what that says about your thoughts and feelings, then I think that's a really great jumping off point for you to dig deeper. Futility's Forgotten Soldier said, when you do any guided meditation, I'd recommend don't add logic to it. It'll save you a lot of time. I absolutely agree. I think my biggest breakthrough was letting go of the expectations that I had. Let go of overthinking, make sure you're not too tired and you're gonna fall asleep and just let your mind wander and follow that. There are so many brilliant comments where people talk about their own experiences and again, share advice with others. And I'm honestly so glad that like this has come together and people are talking to each other about it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's honestly been like quite a cool experience to go through and if you've got questions, if you want to discuss it further, then let's do that. It does feel so good to talk about this again, so thank you for watching the video today. I'm probably going to keep going, and you never know, maybe this time next year I'll be able to come over to your subconscious and say hello. But until then, I'll see you next time.